It may well have completely passed you by, but 2017 marked the last year in which FIFA's Confederations Cup took place. And fast forward to 2025 and world football's governing body will finally have a new competition to sit in the slot it used to occupy, with the first edition of the newly revamped Club World Cup set to take place in the United States during the months of June and July. That also means that the 2023 Club World Cup, due to take place in Saudi Arabia this December, will be the final one in its current format, with the competition expanding from just seven teams to 32 and taking place every four years rather than annually. Ever since taking over from Sepp Blatter in 2016, FIFA president Gianni Infantino has been firm in his desire to expand both the Men's World Cup and the Club World Cup telling Mundo Deportivo that same year, today football is not just about Europe and South America, the world has changed and that's why we need to make the Club World Cup more interesting for teams and also for fans around the world. Creating a tournament that is much more attractive will attract more sponsors and television companies from around the world. Seven years into the job and Infantino has got his wish, but shoehorning in another big summer tournament hasn't gone down well in many circles. The Premier League's chief executive Richard Masters said in 2021 that it was committed to preventing any radical changes to the post-2024 FIFA international match calendar that would adversely affect player welfare and threaten the competitiveness, calendar, structures and traditions of domestic football. While Global Footballers Union Fifth Pro said that the new tournament poses a threat to the well-being of players who are already pushed to their limit with the current international match calendar. Infantino's predecessor Blatter has also also been very critical, saying that club football is none of FIFA's business. But in a year that has seen both Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, two of football's most marketable names, leave the European game, could the new Club World Cup threaten its power? For decades, the Champions League has been the pinnacle of club football for both quality and commercial revenue, and has inspired Infantino's desire to expand FIFA's own competitions. On today's Football Daily Explained, we're posing a question. Could FIFA finally rival UEFA when it comes to club football? Before we get into what the new Club World Cup will mean for the future of the global game and whether it can rival the Champions League, let's briefly outline how it will work, starting with the qualification process. Unsurprisingly, Europe dominates when it comes to representation, with 12 of the 32 teams coming from countries within UEFA. South America is the second most represented with six clubs, while Asia, Africa and the region of North and Central America will take four each, and Oceania just one. As hosts, the USA will also be granted an additional spot spot in 2025. So far, places have been granted to the winners of the Champions League and equivalent competitions across each region between 2021 and 2024, meaning Chelsea, Real Madrid and Man City have qualified from Europe, Palmeiras and Flamengo have qualified from South America, and others including US outfits Seattle Sounders, Saudi club Al-Hilal and Egyptian giants Al-Akhli have made it from other federations. Due to Oceania having just one spot, the four winners of the OFC Champions League will be assessed on their overall performance across those four years, with the best one making the cut, and a similar system will be used to fill up the remaining spots in other federations. So, the new Club World Cup will feature clubs from a much wider variety of nations than its previous incarnation, and by extension, should bring in a much larger global audience. Its format should be more engaging too. With 32 teams in the tournament, it will work in the same way as the regular World Cup did between 1998 and 2022, with teams split into eight different groups and two from each progressing to the knockout stage. As we saw at the Qatar tournament, this format of one-off group games often leads to upsets, with Germany, Belgium, Denmark and Uruguay all crashing out at the first stage and Morocco and Croatia making it to the semi-finals. And looking beyond the format, it's clear why there is hope the revamped Club World Cup will benefit world football. Despite the efforts of the US, China and most recently Saudi Arabia, Europe still leads the way by a distance in the club game, with top prospects from around the world setting their sights on making it to a Champions League club. While the Chinese Super League once offered incredible pay packets to their ambitious transfer targets, something that Major League Soccer still can for the right players and the Saudi Pro League has taken to new proportions with gargantuan deals for Ronaldo and Benzema among others, these initiatives are yet to hurt Europe's standing when it comes to quality and quantity of talent and the revenues that its competitions generate. The Premier League remains by far the most lucrative domestic competition in the world, with the wealth divide between it and other huge leagues like Serie A and the Bundesliga only growing since 2020, and as for continental competition, nothing comes close to the UEFA Champions League. 
Due to the huge commercial revenue it generates, UEFA gave out around $2 billion in prize money in the 2022-23 season to clubs competing in the Champions League and subsequent Super Cup, and around $453 million to those competing in the Europa League. Compare that to the FIFA World Cup, which had a total prize pot of $440 million for its 2022 edition, and the Copa Libertadores, South America's most prestigious club competition, which has seen its total prize money increase to around $208 million for the 2023 campaign, and the gap between Europe and the rest of the world is stark. Though no official figure has been given for what teams stand to win for participating in the new Club World Cup, with time still remaining for new sponsors to back the tournament and television rights yet to be sold, the announcement of the USA as hosts was quickly followed up by reports that prize money will run into the hundreds of millions, with a potential 100 million euros going to the winner. That's the same figure Man City received from UEFA for becoming European champions in 2023. This kind of prize money is simply unheard of for clubs outside Europe, and if paired with a successful entertaining competition in 2025, will only make qualification in future years a bigger priority for top clubs in Africa, Asia and the Americas. The flip side of this, of course, is that massive clubs like Al Ahly and Palmeiras will become even richer compared to their domestic and continental rivals, creating a situation not dissimilar to Europe, where top honours are shared between an increasingly small cluster of elite sides across the region. But this has already happened to an extent. Since 1992, just four clubs outside Brazil and Argentina have won the Copa Libertadores, and since 2016, all the AFC Champions League winners have come from either Japan, Korea or Saudi Arabia. The last West African side to win the CAF Champions League, meanwhile, was Nigerian outfit Enyimba back in 2004 with clubs from North Africa dominating in recent years. And with the introduction of a more prestigious and expansive global competition, there would be hope that fans in North America, Africa and Asia, where many primarily follow the European game, would become more invested in clubs from their own region participating in it. And if this happens, the Club World Cup gaining a bigger audience than the Champions League is a very real possibility. The best example to consider when talking about potential interest in the new Club World Cup is the Men's World Cup, FIFA's pride and joy. While its prize money pales in comparison with the Champions League, its viewing figures far outweigh it, with the 2022 final between Argentina and France watched by an estimated 1.5 billion people worldwide. An estimated 450 million viewers tuned in for the 2023 Champions League final between Man City and Internazionale, with the European showpiece generally averaging around 400 million viewers in previous years. For context, that's a full 150 million less than the audience for the 2022 World Cup opener that took place between the relatively small footballing nations of Qatar and Ecuador. So when it comes to capturing the audience of the world, nothing quite compares to the World Cup. FIFA's problem is that the Men's World Cup only happens every four years, and while the women's event also draws in pretty impressive viewing figures, it is nowhere near as big a moneymaker. In 2019, the year of the previous Women's World Cup in France, FIFA recorded a $281 million loss. In 2022, they recorded a profit of $2.36 billion, owing to an estimated $5 billion worth of revenue generated by the Men's World Cup in Qatar. UEFA, meanwhile, generated $4.3 billion worth of revenue in the 2021-22 season from club competitions alone, with the introduction of the Europa Conference League helping boost income. The previous financial year in which the men's European Championships occurred, they generated almost $6 billion. These numbers are crucial to understanding FIFA's current strategy. Its president Gianni Infantino has looked to the success of club football in Europe as inspiration for his own ventures. Not only has he spearheaded the move to a bigger and more commercially enticing Club World Cup, but he has also increased the capacity of the Men's World Cup from 32 to 48 teams, a change that comes into place at the next tournament in 2026, and will see the number of games increase from 64 to 104 cue even larger television audiences, ticket sales and revenue. This expansion may well have helped inspire his push for the Africa Super League, a competition which is set to launch later this year and, according to Infantino, will generate at least $100 million in revenue for those who participate. As of June, Saudi Arabia were in talks over a $200 million sponsorship deal for the tournament, which promises to fund the modernization of the continent's footballing infrastructure. 
In theory, this would see teams from Africa become stronger in the future, when they will have at least four extra places at the World Cup, which as a result would become a more competitive tournament and in turn attract an even bigger audience from the world's second most populous continent. Add in a four yearly club competition that effectively replaces the spot of the now defunct Confederations Cup, a competition that never really captured the attention of football fans at large, and FIFA should see its profits become bigger and more consistent in the future. As The Athletic's Ed Mackey wrote about Infantino, his addiction to expansion, and more so the money that is subsequently generated, continues to dominate the reasoning for his decision-making, regardless of the effects it has on football's most talented exponents. Which leads us onto the topic of player welfare. With the Champions League and World Cup expanding in the future and another new European trophy springing up two years ago, more top-level players are having to play more football. And with a new club competition taking place in the off-season between the European Championship and World Cup years, not to mention the next one taking place in the same year as the Africa Cup of Nations, elite professionals face the prospect of having even less respite. However, concerns about players burning out hasn't stopped the expansion of football competitions so far, and the commercial opportunities and footballing prestige offered up by the new Club World Cup mean that billionaire club owners will be keen for their size to participate in it. And by extension, global fan bases will be enticed by a new competition that threatens to rival the Champions League. But could it actually become bigger than the UCL? Right now, probably not. The financial supremacy of European football and its numbers advantage in terms of qualification will mean it's unlikely a European club won't win in 2025. And until a side from outside Europe triumphs, it may not feel distinct enough from the Champions League for it to become a more important measure of the world's best club sides. But in a year where Saudi Arabia are buying some of Europe's best players in their prime, it's foolish not to consider that the dominance of the Champions League can't come under threat. If we transported ourselves 20 years into an imaginary future, the prospect of playing for the world champions could see the next Erling Haaland decide to sign for the newly crowned Al Hilal rather than Man City and when his career is gearing up rather than winding down. In this same scenario, the next Messi could move to an MLS club when he's 26 rather than 36. And of course, Al Halal's involvement in the Kylian Mbappe saga that is taking place as this video goes out is a sign that we are perhaps already living in this future, and a new global club competition may simply accelerate this change. It may seem far-fetched right now, but FIFA's latest venture may well be the biggest challenge to the Champions League dominance since its inception in the early 1990s. Many may not like it, but we may just have to get used to it. So that was our take on the new Club World Cup and whether it could rival the Champions League. But what do you make of it? Let us know in the comments below and subscribe to Football Daily if you haven't done so already. This video comes as part of Sky Sports' campaign on the future of football, so if you enjoyed it, why not check out all the other subjects covered and all the other great content covered as part of the campaign. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.